Welcome back to Creative. This is Brian. No, this is Creative. I'm Brian. Ah! So, we've got a great adventure coming up today. A great creative adventure. We are going to create little uh, bar necklaces. And we are going to create some uh, coins to go also. We're going to create a few coins. Uh, they're going to be a 1.5 inch coin. They're going to be very cool. We're going to use this not with wood. We're going to be casting some pewter. And we're going to be using MDF, medium density fiberboard, to do that. It is, uh, I, I get the fiberboard from a person called Wood It Is on Etsy. Uh, wood It's, it's really great. It's 11 by 8.5. And the wonderful thing about that is that this guy actually measures it out to 11 by 8.5. I've learned that nothing, nothing, is actually what it's measured says it is. If it says it's 12 inches, it's like 11.45 inches. Or if it says it's 9 inches wide, it's actually probably 8.45 inches. This is actually 11 by 8.5. It is exact. And that is fantastic. Because when you're working on a computer, things are exact. If you put a create a document that's 12 inches by 9 inches in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you may be using, it's actually 12 inches by 4. Point, by, by you know 8.5 inches. It's 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 exactly what you put. So when you send that over to the laser, it's going to consider that it's that length. And when you put in a piece of wood that you think is that length and it's not, it goes and right off the edge, and you lose whatever's over here, which can cause lots of issues if you're trying to do some casting like this, especially because you have to line everything up and tape it up. And, You'll see, we'll get there. But first off, we need to pop on over into Photoshop so that we can create the molds themselves or uh, we're, that we're gonna etch out with the laser. You would think, oh, you're using wood to cast metal, you must be insane. Well, pewter has a temperature, as I said, of 450 degrees and we're gonna be a pouring temperature of about 500. Wood's gonna go whoosh, at about six. So. We're good. It's just going to score it a little, make it a little hot, make it um, blackened, but it's not going to catch fire and it's not going to burn down the house. That would suck a lot. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's pop on into Photoshop and uh, let's get this let's get this adventure going. Let's get creative. Okay, this is a new little way of doing things here. I know you can see my uh, window being moved around. Um, let's see if I can get that. Yeah, no, that doesn't help any. Uh, I'm gonna put it right here. Ah, okay. I'm gonna have to do it with it in there so you can see it. Um, you can also see me down in the corner. This is a new thing I have not done before. Um, we, I do have a spotlight right here, just so you can see me. Because the room is not that bright, even though it's daytime. I'm over against a wall, so. I've got the uh, light behind me. So what we want to do is we want to start off because we need to know exactly what scales we're working with. Um, we could put in a window and a ruler, or um, you know what, let's put in a view and a guide. We're going to start off with a vertical guide. I want to bring it over um, X number of inches. I'm going to say two right there. So now we can see that's two inches. The the What we're going to start off with first is the uh, medallion thing, the, the little square, uh, rectangular long uh, necklace. So we're going to want to go with a, a uh, uh, new guide. Let's toss in a new guide here. And we want it to be horizontal. You can do this with a ruler too. But we wanted that one two inches. We're going to want this one to be probably about three inches right there. Now that gives me an area so it shows me what I can work with here. Um, I need to go ahead and create a new layer down here in the corner that you can't see because it's underneath where my picture is. Let's move my picture up a little. Yeah. All right, my picture's been moved up a little so you can kind of follow with me. Um, let's go ahead and click on a new layer. Right there, pow, new layer. I'm gonna use my select tool and I'm gonna collect right in here. And I just wanna select everything to right there. That's what I want, right there. Let's go ahead and fill that with just some plain old black, like so. There we go. 
plain old black. It's black. That's important because what we need to do is we need to have things that are exactly the same size. We always need the same size when we're working with this. If something is not the same size, then that is going to cause us some issues. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, change the opacity on this layer down to a little bit. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to make the actual size of our, of our, uh, well, make a new layer, of our item. I think I want our item to be more than uh, 0.5 inches. And I don't want the height to be that high. I want it to be like, uh, let's say, 2 inches in length. Okay. So now, uh, once again, just like we did before, I'm going to go ahead and select everything here. And I am going to fill this one in with the black. Now, I'm going to move this. Select these select. I'm going to move it. Generally try to get it right in the center here. like it to be just dead center. If you don't have it dead center, then that's going to cause some problems. Okay, let's clear these these uh, guides out. Um, we know we need this to be well, that looks about dead center. How we can find out is we're going to select these. I'm going to duplicate them. Okay, and now I want to go edit, transform, flip horizontal, and it looks like they matched just fine. That's good. That's important. We're going to put one right next to the other with just a little bit of space in between them. Something like that. Now I'm going to take all of these and give just a uh, all of these. Give just a little bit of space on the top. Like that. There is our actual area that we're going to be working with. Okay, so we should probably come on over here and add some folders. I'm going to call this group one uh, cutout. And in the cutout goes this one and this one. All right, and I'm going to reduce, uh, increase that opacity all the way to 100%. I can do the opacity here on the folder itself, which will do everything inside. Um, this one is going to be a new folder called area. 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 And, and that's going to be important because we're going to need that area. All right. And let's grab these two. Oh, this one. All right. That one. And no, not the folder. There we go. Now, I want to duplicate this whole thing again, which is just create some mess here. So let's duplicate the layer. Okay. I need it to come right there. Right. Now, this is the cutout. We do need the cutout, actually, and we're going to need this here. This one is going to say, well, we have to have, when we're doing this, we need a blank, and we need, we need a side, a side, and a blank in the middle. The blank in the middle adds the depth. So what we need to do for this, this one here is, is we're going to go left, I'm going to say right, center. So, for starters, we're going to go ahead and click on this, we're going to come down here, and we're going to delete it. And this, we don't need anymore, we'll trash it. And there we go. Now we can see that we have a hole here. But we don't just need that hole there, we need to go ahead and we need to, to make that hole work for us. So we're going to choose the Polygon Lasso tool. I'm going to click in here. Yep, no pixels were selected. Because I need to take this... I need to put a pore spout. It needs to be like a V, as I found out, because the air needs to be able to escape from it. Right, so we want to delete that too. Uh, well, on this one. Delete that too, and then select. Deselect, there we go. So what we've done is we've created an area where the, the, the pewter will pour in on each one of those sides. So these are area, these are for area. Now I want to add a new folder. Okay, that should all right. New folder. And we're gonna call this one raster. If you're familiar with anything else I've done, I always like to use things called raster. 
Now, like I said, I want these to say words, so I'm going to go to area here, and I'm going to reduce its opacity as well, like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to pop back over to raster and say, okay, well, on this little triangular beautiful piece of machinery here, let's add the words I want to say. Two sides, the sides here and here aren't going to really say anything because we can't really, well, we can't get anything there. So I want to go ahead and uh, hit up the type. And uh, you know what? I'm going to want to also grab a heart of some sort. So off to Pixabay. And I want to put in a heart. And I want to choose a vector, actually. Heart vector. I really like that heart, so I'm going to copy this image. Or I can this in my uh, pictures creative all right so back on Photoshop real quick and we can import that we'll open it and I'll pop on over to the folder Boom. It is way incredibly too large. So we're going to drag it over to our picture here. And you can see that it just filled the whole thing. Let's go to edit, transform, and scale. And uh, I see one issue here that might be helpful if I were to um, change the view to actually show that desktop. Wouldn't that be nicer? Let's see. Let's see. So hold on just one second. And we're back. So now I made it so you can see the whole thing here. Okay. This is very large. So we're going to shrink it down. We're going to move it. We need to fit it inside that space. That means I can start working with it like that since we're now showing the whole desktop, not just the application. Any question? All right. All righty. I want to bring this in here. And I want to move it roughly in here. OK. Now, uh, edit image adjustments and desaturate, because everything needs to be in black and white. You can't do laser. You can't do color, I'm afraid. Color doesn't work. So there we go. Let's go to text. And we're going to say, yeah, we just want an I. And I want this to be black. Yeah, black works because black would cut it out, which would bring it to stick out like that. So, uh, I like that, but it's way small. That's way big. I think you see where we're going with this. Oh, that was the wrong way to go. The window. And I don't have history. I don't have anything on here. So let's go ahead and undo that move. We need to be actually selecting that. It's not. Okay. And uh, one more. And we need to go with the text here. No. You. And we're going to 
see that that really, I mean, it really doesn't, well, it fits. It cuts it really close, a little closer than I'd like. So I'm going to select all of these, edit, transform, and scale, and I'm just going to use them a little. I'll take the eye and use it a little by itself. Scale. Yeah. And let's take the Y O U. There we go. Y O U. Okay. Um, and I want to take this area. Just grab this area here. And this is the first one, so I'm going to duplicate the layer. Okay. I'll move it up to the raster, which means everything's going to go black. And I'm going to select it with control. I'll go up here and select the modify and contract. I'm going to contract it like five pixels. Way, way too much. So let's uh, select, deselect, and let's select modify. Well, uh, I select the first select, modify, and then contract. And we're going to go with like two pixels. That's better. And then we hit delete. Okay, so <clears throat> I like that. I like that. We're going to go with that. That's going to be a black outline around it. Um, that heart's going to be an issue, but not that much. So let's go ahead and let's duplicate this layer as well. We're going to move it on up. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select, and then we're going to modify, contract, OK, and we'll hit the delete key, and there we go. Selecting, when I do it, as I hold control and click on that. All right, so select, deselect. So there we have our little outline. <clears throat> let's find that heart. Let's see what is this. This is it's the heart right there. I'm going to move it kind of over a little bit, just like that. Okay. It'll kind of work there. Let's... Let's see. Let's. We want these to be at the very top, however, so we're just move up like that. All right. That's better. There we go. So it's gonna say, "I love you." It's my I heart you, and then it's gonna say uh, here um, on the back. What do you think it needs to say? Well, it's the back, so it probably doesn't need to say anything, but. Could have it say the same thing or something else. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so I paused for a little bit as I try to figure out what I was going to do here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is one thing we have to remember is that whenever you do text, you have to clip it horizontally because it's always the mirror you need to have etched into the, into the mold. You don't want to have it um, readable for you because when it puts the metal in, it's going to go into there and come out as the mirror image of whatever you have. So if you have a mirror image, and when you bring the metal out, it's going to come out looking normal. So I want to uh, go ahead and add some text here. Beautiful. I'm going to say yes on this. I'm going to edit, transform. I'm going to flip this uh, 90 degrees clockwise. That works. I'm going to edit, transform, and scale it because I need it to fit in here. And just a little bit more. Alright, we don't want it right at the top. You don't want really anything right at the top. And now we're going to go edit, transform, and horizontal and it looks kind of weird because you're like I can't read that and the answer is no you really can't but it'll work um, because it'll come out looking kind of normal if we do it that way now another thing here that we're going to need to look at is how thick do we actually want this do we want this just one thick or do we want this too thick I like I think one thick would be plenty enough um, I'm only gonna make one of these for right now I think um, uh, 
Well, you know what? We can make another one. We can make another one. Um, let's go ahead and let's take these layers here. And let's raster them. Raster the type and then control E. It's just a compressor in the one. And then uh, because we have here, let's see, what is this? This is, I have no idea what this is. Bless the heart. That doesn't seem to be doing anything, so I'm going to get rid of it. And then let's see. Uh, this is, okay, this. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to rasterize this text, too. Rasterizing the type takes it from uh, being a uh, type and putting it into a um, uh, picture. I'm going to just close those off. And then that's the uh, text there. Oh, you know what? Let's... Uh, Let's, let's undo that. Uh, I, I would like to do this one to that. I'll leave it beautiful by itself. And this will do this. So that way we can use this as a template for later. This is a border. And this is a border here. I'm just double clicking to, to uh, change the name. See that makes it go away. We do actually want the borders because that'll make it <coughs> remember where it's dark. This will etch deeper, and that's where the, the level will go into. So I like that. Well, let's make one more. Really, all we need is the uh, the borders and this, this, and this. So we're going to duplicate these. Okay. Ooh. I don't think I can go over that way. I don't really need to. I can do it right there. Now we know we need to have these ones here. Come on down. Come on down to cutouts. There we go. We don't need that open anymore. We can just do it like this. So that's in the cutout area. We have some borders in here as well. So there's our borders. Here's our, our, our working area here. Now what we're going to do is, um, I, I was just going to put some, some wording in here. Um, so, so let's, let's click here and I'm going to put together, I'll highlight the whole thing. I'll move it up here, together. And then I want to go edit and transform and rotate it. I'll move it right in there. Let's zoom in a little. Try to get it so it's kind of in the middle-ish. <sighs> well, that's that's okay. Um, you know what? No. 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 Uh, If I don't like it, I can always melt it back down. Yep, let's click over here. We have to center it. And I know you're looking at it and saying, I can still read that. And yes, you can. You won't be able to soon because I'm going to go ahead and take these, go edit, transform, the tunnel. In, edit, transform, look horizontal. There we go. Can't read them anymore. Whoa. All right. Now we want to bring both of these down underneath the borders. We want the borders to be on the top. All right. So there we have these. They're going to come up looking pretty good. Pretty fancy. Pretty fancy. Yeah. Um, I think. It would be nice if I could take this beautiful here. Let's rasterize these. All right. Well, let's get this beautiful here. Let's just it's beautiful. All right. Let's see if I can bring it down just a little. Because I want to be able to have um, I want to be able to have that. So can I bring this down just a touch? Yeah, I could. All right. The top 
generally it doesn't fill in all that well all the time. So bringing it down a little is not bad. Okay. Whatever this is, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's iffy. So we're going to go with that. And then, like I said, we're going to do some coins. I'm only going to show you how to do one coin here. I'm going to make another coin. I'm not going to cover that because I don't have copyrights or anything else on any of the pictures used or anything Star Wars because that's all Disney. And I don't want to get anywhere near in trouble with the mouse house. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, once again, use my... Um, I'm going to create it uh, come up here, all the way up here. Let's go, actually, let's go to cut out. And here, let's see the copy. I'm going to create, let's add some layers. View, new guide, horizontal, sure. Start with the top and bring it down. I want to come down to about, those are three inches. I want to come down to only two. 2.5. 2.5 inches works. Let's go and let's do the same thing. Let's go to uh, a new guide. And then let's go with a vertical guide. And we want it to be also 2.5 inches, just like that. Um, let's come in here and start to right on that line. There we go. And we're going to fill it in here. Perfect. Select, deselect, let's get rid of our guides. Let's play with guides. All right, now I want to bring that right here. And that doesn't fit anywhere. I'm going to duplicate this a few times actually. I always try to not waste wood. So we've got three here, and we're going to make um, yeah, that's not much I can do about that, huh? Nope. 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 Let's go ahead and let's start with our our. Uh, let's go with one by one inches. I want to do a 1.5 by 1.5. You may ask, why are you doing that? You just make a guide. And I'm like, well, I can, but it would be easier on me if I just use this with a round. Go right to this corner here. Drag it on down. It will tell me with that little line. There we go. It'll say, there you have a perfect circle. Now I can just fill that circle. Oh, well, I probably should have just gone layer and then fill that circle. Select, deselect. Now I know this is the right size. I can bring it on over here. And this one is actually going to go into the area. We'll toss the area back on again. That is a 1.5 inch coin. And we're going to want to duplicate. Well, you know what? We're going to want to come in here. I'm going to want to take this cutout and make it go away. So I'm going to want to take these two and delete them. Yep, bye bye. I just want to look at this one here. And now I'm going to want to take, and I want to want to make this fit. That looks dead center there, but let's go ahead and let's edit, transform, and we're going to scale it against one. I like exact, but you know what? I also like working. That's about all it needs to be right there. Okay, now if I got this right, which I'm hoping I did, I should be able to duplicate this and then edit. No. Let's bring it up here. Alright, let's just make that the same. Let's go edit, transform. Flip counterclockwise, and let's just turn this one off and let's see. Let's see, that shows you right there they're not even. That means we're not good. Yep, this one here needs to be dead center, even on that board. So let's try again. 
duplicate layers. Transform with horizontal. Edit, transform with horizontal. That looks good. All right, it looks like we got it this time. We can go ahead and bring this one down where it goes. Grab this one and this one. And this time, it looks like we probably can get them in there. Let's go. Let's oh, let's go. This, 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 and this. Let's just bring them over a little, like that. Up a little, like that. Right o, right o. Now remember, hopefully, what we have to do with these. We have to duplicate them again. Yep. And then we take this one and we bring it down here. Now this one has got that little. Uh, oh, let's put it in the right spot before I say this one is doing this. All right, this one has got this one right here. What we need to do is we need to control, hold down control, click on that, the picture. Come down to this layer and hit delete. Right. That makes that go away. Interesting. Let's see here. This probably needs to be at 100% when I do that. And this one probably does too. So let's go okay, let's go here. Click here, control, there, delete. Yep, there we are. Now this one can be deleted. We don't need that one. We can put that back to capacity down below 35. The area and the cutout. That's fine. Now, as before, we need to create a, a uh, area where we can pour in this, this uh, I feel pour it in. Yep. And here we are. That's where we're pouring it in. And we're going to go ahead and click over here and we'll delete. So there is, a, there is a first run of what we need. Excellent. All right. Now, that's one coin's worth. Um, we know that we need. We can take these here. This is that one, and this is that one. Right. So we can take, pop that, go here to render, raster, add a new layer. Let's fill it in. Black. Let's do select. Modify. Track, OK, and delete. This is a border, circle border, two. Right, and let's go to this one. Let's hit Control. Let's come over here. Let's add a new layer. Once again, fill it up. Select, modify, contract, two, hit delete. Select. And circle border one. Perfect. We can make area go away. We don't need it anymore. This is what we're looking at as far as as what our coin is going to look like. We've got a little lip in here. We've got some of these fun things there. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with these for right now, though, because this is where we're sitting. We're going to select these. And these. I need to duplicate them. Okay, and I need to move them. I'm going to move them right now, just, just down for right now. Um, I'm going to take this one here. Ah, what am I doing? There we go. All right, and we'll put it there. Now, these three, we know we need to move them right on down. Come on, down we go. Fast area. There we go. If you want to put them in cutout. Okay, so we've got two coins here. I'm pretty sure we can get some more. So let's go ahead and let's select these that we just did. Let's duplicate them one more time. Okay. And we're going to move them right here. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. And 
grab this guy and we'll remove him right there. I don't think I can fit any more in here though, so this little part here is going to be wasted. But that is okay. You can't get everything. We really made good with a lot of this. And there will be a 1.5 inch coin, which is really nice. And remove those right there. Okay. So now we have the ability to to do this. This is one side, that's the other. We have the middle. One side, other, middle. One side, other, middle. So let's go ahead and add some text into this beautiful little monster here. We're going to go with, uh, well, what I've been told never. change this one's size. Alright. So, now, as before noted, you know we have to come in here and we have to edit, transform, and put horizontal on everything. Everything has to be flipped. Can't have it not flipped. Edit, transform. You don't flip it then oops if you don't flip it then just you can give up because it's not going to work and then you'll be sad and that will be sad and it currently does not want to let me select this I think it's because I have a setting in here that's off but I don't know where that setting is at this time I used to, but I don't anymore. Okay, so that's how we go ahead and we put together a coin. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to save this out in two different ways. Um, the different ways we set this out as is we're going to have to come to our cutout here and we're going to have to initially come in and go 100%. We do not want to see our rasters in this. I want them to disappear. We need to save this one out. Save as, so I'm going to call this one. Um, it's a JPEG, and we need to save it as medallion. Cutout. All right, we're gonna call it medallion cutout. Yep. Okay, okay. And then we're going to turn off the cutouts, and turn on the rasters, and we're gonna fill in the blanks with these. I'm gonna fill those in, uh, and then we will pop into Inkscape, and we will start the laser on the cutting. Okay, we're back again. Let's go ahead. We're in Inkscape now. I'm going to bring in the uh, I'm going to bring in an image uh, import. Um, we're going to bring it in from uh, uh, pictures, creative, right things, vids, right, and the medallion cutout. I'm going to bring this one in. Okay, this is what we want right there. Inkscape, I'm going to go edit and resize page selection. This is our cutout, remember? The cutouts from Italians. This is we want it to cut out everything around it. So I'm going to go with a view, zoom. I'm going to zoom in one to one. It makes it a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. That's a little easier to see. Uh, I'm going to go with path and trace bitmap. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put this at 950. Backspace 9. Uh, let's do a preview. Looks good. Alright, uh, up here in fill and stroke. If you don't have fill and stroke open, it's in objects, fill and stroke. So we're going to click X right there, and we want to stroke it. We want to have it 255. Perfect. So that makes a little outline all the way around here. It's exactly even with what we need to work with. So now let's go with. Uh, File, import, and I need to import the actual picture of the medallions. What I put in here, I'm going to move them. 
Go there even. Is something. On the corner. Hit page down and we should see everything lines up just fantastically. It seems to. I would say that's exactly what we need it to be. This is what we need for our picture. So I'm going to go ahead and go file. I'm going to save as this. I'm going to call this. Uh, what am I going to call this? I'm going to call this a uh, medallion. Uh, computer. That's what I'll call it. Why not? And then I'm done with that. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and let's open up K40 and bring it up. We're going to open our file. We're going to open that one. Libraries, pictures, Damn. And apparently I didn't save it. I thought I did. Well, save as. Uh, oh, I saved in LaserWorks. Ah. That would be somewhere. Yeah. LaserWorks. There we go. Okay. Now we just wait forever for this thing to load. And remember, we're going to want to raster before we do our cut. That's always important. So we're going to change this over here to 300 millimeters per second. Um, I know for a few things, we need to go to advanced settings and make sure that this says 2. We need that to be on the 2. 2. 2. Yes. And we can go ahead and hide the advanced settings now. Um, we can initialize our laser. Not a good sign. So we have a little work to do with our laser. Um, let's go ahead and close this. Yeah. And close this. Yeah. Uh, I can even close that. And let's see if I can get this working. Okay, so I uh, had some issues there. Technical difficulties! The K40 laser is a cheap Chinese laser. And it obviously has some cheap Chinese issues. Um, so I have corrected them. I had to clean a sensor. The, the head was just going forward, 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 forward. Um, it's really annoying if you have to get in there and clean it and then restart it 50 times. And then it gets going. So I got it finally going. And I think I'm ready to raster. Now I'm going to go ahead and give a little speech on safety. A laser takes absolutely nothing to burn right a hole right through your head. Well, through your eyes, anyway, and blind you forever. So, you need to get a set of glasses, see if your glasses, that are the right spectrum, I guess you could say. These ones are, are uh, 10,600, which is actually what the CO2 lasers give off. And, they look pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway. So, I have these on, so now I'm not going to go blind. They also dull everything a little bit, They're like sunglasses. And, you know, they, they actually they look pretty good like sunglasses, and they fit my glasses just perfectly. So, I might wear these as sunglasses. I don't know. They're pretty cool. However, that said, uh, everything looks good here. I'm going to shut this off. How? I'm going to shut that real quick. And um, if I can find my ca oh, my camera's right here. Here's my camera. I can go ahead and I can record this and let you all see the lasers. So let me walk over here and get that set up. Oh, please. Stop. We need this. This is the stand. Thank you. 
together again. Assemble. Let's stick this camera in here. I don't know what kind of juice this is, man, but I don't know what kind of juice this is. Maybe over here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is where that whole um, that scene is right here. Let's see if it carries. I'm blind. I'll have to look for it. It's somewhere around here. Anyway, so let's go ahead and put this in here so we can record us up some. So we can see this new laser. It's a little bit of work involved, not that much. Just slide this little thing here, right in here. Lock it down. So you can push the right script and just kind of grab it like this. Turn it on. Let's see what we see here. Now that's ready to go. I will hit record on it. It is recording. And let's go ahead and let's start our laser with the raster engraved at 300. And remember, we've got our settings. We want to put that at 2. Yep. And we're good to go. There we go. It's starting its process. And let's switch over to see how that works, and then we'll be back here.
that. And so hopefully you got to see all the blades are, it was sped up, of course, because I don't want to wait the hour or so it takes to actually um, etch all that out and then cut it out and all that stuff in the wood. I use a setting of 35 on my K40 for doing these, and they come out pretty darn fancy when you do it that way. They work pretty well. Um, and they, they cut through really in one, but I usually do two. When you do two, it tends to char the bottom up a bit. But it's okay to do that for what we're doing these for because they're going to get really charred up anyway. But uh, if I was trying to actually do this as, as an end result, I would not want that charring. I'd probably go down to like 25 for the, uh, the, the, the thing. If I do a, the cut, it's the engraving raster on 35 and then reduce it to 25 and then do the actual cut um, or go to 45 and do it one time. That would be my, my suggestion for settings. But now that we have these, what we need to do is we need to tape them together. So we need to line them up just right. Use your finger or whatever you need to do. Uh, set them on something. Line them up just right. Uh, this one, when I set it in there, it didn't quite go to where I wanted it to. So I'm having to kind of say that the bottom is not going to match the top real well. Uh, and then you're going to want to have a little hole in there. That's where we're going to pour. And when you have it like this, what you need to do is you need to cut some tape. I'm using regular paper masking tape. Uh, painter's tape uh, works too. The blue tape you use for a 3D printer. Uh, you can use this for a 3D printer too. This is Scotch 3M paper tape. Um, it, it, oh, this stuff is just, I don't know if it's old or if it's it just it's really tough stuff. Get a good amount here. What we need to do essentially is we need to hold it together kind of tight. I have some, some little board things over there and a vise. You're going to need to have a vise. So I'm going to take this one first and I'm going to put it on here. Yep. And then I'm going to take the next part, put it on there, and try to line it up uh, at the, uh, the top and then the sides. I want this to be perfect, but at the top, because on the, as I said, this one kind of went over on the side a little. So let's get that even there. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. I set it down to make it flat and even, so I know that it's flat and even. And then I'm going to take the tape and I'm just going to run it over it. And then you can see I'm going to tape a little on the long side, but that's okay. You just need to hold. A little sticky in places, and again, that's okay. It needs to hold it flat, it needs to keep it together. And when you're done, you'll have something like this. I don't label them because I like to be surprised at what's inside. But um, I'm not doing too many, so it's not going to be that surprising. Uh, let's continue. Let's grab some more tape. Boom. So where's the tape? Uh, small details tend to not come out very well. So if you're going to do something with small details, chances are you're going to be disappointed. Uh, I'm doing one right here with small details, so chances are. I will be disappointed. Um, you just gotta try it out. Remember, anything you put, uh, any words or anything along that line, you need to make sure that you did reverse them before you do your lasering, uh, because that's gonna that's gonna kill you there. Okay, so there we go. And I, I am gonna have a video on how to do these coins and things with a uh, wood burning set instead of a uh, laser because you can do that it's it's not it's not hard you just need to burn the wood and i'm going to use this mdf wood uh, to show how that's done actually no i got some i got some panels back there that i ordered and they're already cut in the right sizes and that's even better because easy is the way to go uh, you know if you're sitting there spending hours trying to figure out how to cut out the wood then by the time you figure that out, you may have lost the creative ideas that you had going, and that sort of sucks. So it's best to, if you can afford it, it's, it wasn't expensive. I think it was like uh, $6 for 100 of them. 
which is way more than you could ever need. But uh, if you're going to have a wood burning kit, you're going to sit there, then you could probably use them for lots of different things. And um, when I get to that uh, video, I will definitely share uh, the link to Amazon where I got that, as well as some other stuff um, there. So I need to level this up a little. I won't have my tape go crazy on me. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. And ta da da. Ta da da. There we go. That looks adequate. Flat. Okay, so I have three coins right here. Now let's work on our nice, pretty medallion thingies. Let's see. I love you. Beautiful. I love you, beautiful. I love you. Yeah. So, they ought to look really cool if I can get them to work right. Tape. This is a little bit bigger. A little bit more tape, but one of the problems I have is that with this tape is that it does um, tend to uh, roll on itself. It's always nice, you know. No, you see, I'm taking and I'm putting the middle layer in there, and then I take this layer. Try to keep it kind of even and put it in there. The the, the, the boards that you're putting together, they have to be perfectly even. They have to be even in every direction. You gotta put a little pressure on there to keep them that way because you you're gonna be pouring metal in there, and if it's uneven, then that, that will be your your um, your your what you're making will also be uneven. Now this is very long, so I'm going to add a second set of tape to the base. Not as long a tape though, but just to just to make sure that I keep it nice and um, nice and even here, I need to make sure I do that. Very very important. Yep 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 yep. All that fun stuff. Make it make sure I get everything. Um, now that's even. See where the hole is right there. That's where the that's where the that's where the juice is gonna go. Metal juice. And we got one left. This one right here. This one says together forever backwards. Because remember we have words, pairs, images, that fun stuff. Take some tape again. Put this here. I didn't do the top. Alright, set that there. I'll line it up. Take the next part, put it on there. That line it up. Now, for a necklace, you're probably thinking, well, why did you do the back? Do you need to do the back? Well, that way you can flip it over if you want it to be in one way or, you know, just whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's just however you like it. It doesn't even have to say the same things I put in there, of course. Uh, it can say whatever you want it to say. Um, the point is that that, that 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 is how it's made. And that's just what I made for this tutorial. This, this creative adventure that we're on right now. And for other adventures, you may make something completely different. But I think... I think that that is really fun. And so we're going to work with these. And then I've got to go heat up some metal. I have some safety goggles for that. And some mega, mega gigantic gloves. I call them my astronaut gloves, but they are uh, forging gloves or steel worker gloves. Or, I don't know. They're just big gloves that don't let... If the metal splashes on it, it's not going to burn through my hands. Okay, so... Two of these big ones, three of these little ones. Let's go ahead and go back over there, and let's start the uh, the process of doing this fun stuff here.
So, this is the end of part one. Part one. We're going to have part two where we actually take our our uh, molds and we're going to go ahead and pour the pewter in them. And then we're going to see what results we get afterwards. This is already at, at over an hour, so I do really try to keep them shorter than an hour. I just don't usually succeed. I go through too much detail, I think, or I just don't talk fast enough. Maybe if I start talking really fast like this, you may be able to follow along, but I doubt it because it would be really fast like this. So, let's go ahead and end this one off for right now. This is the Necklace and Coins Part 1, and we'll catch you on Part 2. Well, that's some that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you consider hitting the subscribe button? It would help out a lot. It tells me that you like the videos that I'm doing right now. We also have two more videos here for you to watch. We have lots more coming, lots and lots. There are so many things floating around in my head that we have an adventure bonanza coming up for you so if you did like it make sure you click one of those videos make sure you click like subscribe and I will see you next time until then stay creative